Do you need a glow up for your business or your business goals this winter? This video is gonna dive into how you can give yourself a business glow up and you don't have to own a business. It can be for people that also want to start a business, how to realign your goals and make progress. So my name is Sarah May and I help women to make the changes required to live what they feel like is an exceptional life. I help men too, but predominantly women are attracted to my story. So if you like this content, don't forget to like, to share, and subscribe and turn on that notifications bell if you like this content. I love comments too if you want to tell me how you liked this video. So let's dive into how you can give yourself a business glow up. Again, it could be for people that have businesses already or people that have business goals that they want to achieve. So the number one way to give yourself a business glow up is to reflect on exactly why you want a business in the first place. And again, this can be very helpful for existing business owners to revisit those goals, those passions, the reasons why they did it in the first place. And also for those who want to start a business, but you haven't really made the progress that you want to to make. So let's ask yourself why. Number one, get out a journal. Again, you have to journal because when you write pen on paper, you use both sides of your brain. If you get out a laptop and write on that, no. So that's why getting a journal and doing some exercises here are going to be so helpful. Ask yourself, why do I want to start a business or why did I start my business? What were my goals? You can talk about your personal goals. You can talk about your family goals. You can talk about your community goals. You can talk about how you wanted to make a difference and how you felt you were going to achieve that. Okay, so let's revisit why did you do this in the first place, right? Because you didn't need to. You took the path of most difficulty actually when you started a business in a good way. And then next to the why, what was the vision of what you wanted to create? What was that initially or what is that now? I also want you to go even a step further and ask yourself, how am I meeting my vision today? And how am I still falling short? Because by asking ourselves where we're falling short, we can identify the work that needs to be done, right? As human beings, we're always wanting to do and achieve more things. The second we don't have work to do or things to achieve, we flounder, we don't have purpose. So even though it's the hard path, in my opinion, it's the only path for a life worth living. So revisiting that why. Ask yourself, what is that vision? What was the vision and how has it changed? And what work do you still have to do to get to your ultimate vision? How do you want your day-to-day -day life change? How do you want the people that you're working with? How do you want their day-to-day -day lives to change? Okay, maybe you're a relationship coach. You want your clients to have better, more fulfilling and meaningful relationships with deeper connections. Maybe you're a personal trainer who wants to help people to get back their physical health so they can live a full life that they really dreamed of with the energy and the fitness required to show up. So map out exactly what you want to achieve. Then we're going to talk about what haven't you achieved yet that you do want to achieve and what difference will this make for you, your family, your community, your patrons. I hope you're enjoying this so far. You may actually want to pause the video as you're going through and then journal these out loud. All right, number two. When you have all these things out, your why, your vision, what you want, what you need, I then want you to start on this fun journey of creating a vision board. This is optional, but it's a ton of fun. Again, for existing business owners who want to realign or for people that want to start a business and need to get that momentum to get that business going. So I want you to go to canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. I don't get any money for this. It's just software that I love. And then you're gonna type in vision board and you're going to see so many different mockups for what your vision board could look like. So go through, don't waste too much time on this step, but pick a vision board that speaks to you. And that's where you're going to look at those, the why, the vision, what you want to change. And you're going to try to find pictures. These may be your own pictures that you've taken. They may be pictures just from the internet of things that are you want represented in your vision board. So maybe being able to travel more for you and your family, and maybe you wanna have a retreat in Italy for your clients. You can Google Italy, places that I wanna visit. Maybe you Google a person giving a presentation in front of a group of people. Maybe that's your vision, I'm just making this up. But that's where you can start to Google these things and just take screenshots of these. This is personal, you're not gonna share this with anyone but yourself or maybe your close family or friends. And that's where you're gonna plug it into those places 
is in the vision board template that they have on canva.com. Now, if you're even way past the point of like, maybe you're super, super tech savvy, you could probably make your own vision board. Maybe you're more artistic and you want to do actually pen and paper. Maybe you're gonna go out to Michael's and get yourself some paper, a printer, scissors, stickers. You could go to town with this one if you're really creative and you love that kind of stuff. I'd say the middle ground is doing the vision board on Canva, but those are a few options. Let yourself dream. It is only by dreaming that we've ever had good ideas in the first place. At one point, this idea that I would be a successful business owner was a really laughable concept in my life, but I had the courage to dream it. I had the courage or craziness to pursue it. And here I am now on YouTube talking about how I've helped hundreds of women start profitable businesses. So all this to say, your dreams are not stupid. They're there for a reason. God put those in your heart and it is your life's mission to complete those. At least that's the way I look at it. So you do your vision board, you get excited, you play. Maybe you have inspiring pictures of places you wanna go. Maybe you have the way you want to look. Maybe you want to take better care of your body so you can revitalize your business that way and fuse it with the energy that it really deserves. So you wanna put these all in your vision board and then you can export that as a file and you can make it your background on your computer, on your phone, or any other place that you would look. Maybe even you print that out and you put it on your fridge. So again, we're revisiting our why. We're then gonna put this into a wonderful vision board and this is going to help you glow up your business this winter. So the third step for a business glow up is looking at what is working with your business right now or what is working with your getting started plan and also what's not working. You may wanna pause this, get out your journal and write down what's working, what's not working with my approach and what do I need to change? Because again, in order to glow up, in order to make things better, we need to recognize what's not working. Optimism is great. Being positive and grateful for what we're doing well is great, but we also need to be realists and figure out what what do I really need to work on? Because when I know what needs to be worked on, I have the power to make a difference and change it. So some examples might be, I want to start my business, yet I'm not making any time for it. Well, good problem, very common problem. What you're going to do is say, not enough time for my business. You're gonna do a time audit on your time and you're gonna say, here's where my time is going for seven full days. I want you to track it on a journal or a piece of paper, whatever. You wanna track where your mornings, afternoons, evenings are going. And then you wanna do that every day for one full week, no judgment. Maybe you spend an hour scrolling on Instagram every night before you go to bed. Maybe it's your way to kind of unwind. Maybe you hit the alarm clock in the morning and you sleep in. With doing this time audit, you can then take that week's worth of data, maybe even four days could be sufficient, and then you can make a plan for how you're gonna better spend your time. You're gonna get out a Google Calendar. You can use a Google Calendar. You could also use the Calendar app on your phone. And now you're going to take those extra pieces of time that you never thought you had. Even the busiest amongst us, we still typically find time to do things to unwind. That doesn't mean that you're never gonna be able to unwind again. It means right now, in this season of growth, you're going to be extra disciplined and you're going to be extra cautious about where your time is frittered away because you don't wanna fritter it away, right? I love that expression. So you're gonna take the new timeline and put it in your calendar and say, Monday morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., I'm gonna check my business uh, trainings, whatever it is that you need to do with your business, right? Remember, you've got that to-do list. Now you have to slot those to-do items into your calendar. Calendar. Maybe you spend, I remember when I was growing my business with, with kids, I put time in my calendar after they went to sleep. So from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., I spent a couple hours on my business every night and I was very disciplined about it. And the more I did it, the more I loved it. Because the more you work on your business, the more momentum you get, the more excitement you get. So every time you're working on your business, you're putting deposits into your business, into your impact, into the potential and into that future life that you so badly want. So we've got exactly what needs to be done. You're going to take a time on it to find out that extra time where you can do it and then write yourself a new schedule, right? So you have it in your calendar, work on business. You get a reminder. Your husband knows you're going to be working on your business so he won't be disappointed that you're not watching a movie with him. That's just one example of something that isn't going well with starting your business. For the existing business owners, maybe you write down what's going really well. I have a lot of clients, right? This is actually a problem that people get. It's a good problem. It means your business is going well. But what might not be good is you're doing tasks that you don't want to do. Maybe, for example, I train ads managers, people that run ads for companies on social media sites like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Google. And maybe it's that you're doing a task you don't want to do. And maybe this task could be outsourced to someone that you hire to help you either on a contract basis or maybe on a project basis. There could be all sorts of
of solutions to troubleshoot this as in I'm too busy. Well, what tasks do I have that I need to work on myself? What can I not outsource? So for me, that's things like this, creating my videos, creating my content, that stuff that I hold very dear to my heart and I want to be represented in a certain way. So I always have to do that. I can't outsource that. But there's a lot of other things on my team that I do outsource, physically posting the videos to the social media platforms, making deliverables for clients, checking their ad accounts, making sure our portal is up to date. There's all kinds of things that I have outsourced on my team now. So maybe if you're in this season of needing a business glow up and you need to hire someone to help you with the insanity of your life as a small business owner, maybe this is your sign to sit down and think strategically. Do I hire my cousin's uh, nephew who needs a job to help me? Maybe I hire a, a more professional contractor on a project by project basis. There's all kinds of different solutions that you might come up with. I really hope this is helpful for you. The last step to this winter glow up for your business or your business goals is to make sure that your mindset is in the right place. Don't hit away. Keep watching this part because this is actually one of the most important pieces of all. Your success in business is directly related to how much mindset work you're able to do, meaning keep your mindset in the right place. Keep yourself surrounded by positive people. And if they're not positive, then don't tell them the specifics about the business that they don't need to know because they're just going to discourage you anyway. You want to make sure that every single day you are taking time to either pray or meditate, spend some time in nature where you can reflect. You want to be taking care of you because if you're not showing up as your best self, you're not going to be able to achieve the goals that you want. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. I want to add that as a caveat because it is so important. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm not going to be able to have a successful business until everything in my life is perfect. And this is far from the truth. But you need to be able to nurture yourself to the point that you've at least got the energy to move forward with it. So when I grew my business, I mean, I was far from perfect. I didn't work out enough. I didn't always eat healthy, but I did do the things required to get that stuff done, to get stuff done. It also helped that I was very obsessed with my goals. So as much as possible, again, revisit that why and your vision, because that's going to help you to get obsessed and that's also going to give you energy as well. Okay. So you don't need to be perfect, but you still need to do the bare minimum to take care of yourself. So you've got energy. You also need that reflection time. You also need to listen to positive stuff, right? Not necessarily like a toxic positivity, but you need to read examples and associate yourself with stories of people that have been successful. Because if you surround yourself with people that are successful, you are more likely to be successful yourself. Make sure that you are constantly weeding the metaphorical garden of your mind. You are plucking the weeds every single day. I have thoughts of like, you know what? Am I even any good at this? Am I an imposter? There's all kinds of thoughts that we just have running on a tape that's like outdated by 20 years. And then we just have to remember, oh, that's just a thought just floated into my mind. I'm going to pluck it out of my mind because I don't need that. I'm going to tend to the garden of my mind and keep it a temple because I need to stay positive. I'm not going to let the doubt, the fear and all of that junk seep into my day to day life. One of the best ways to do this again is to be in motion. It's hard to stop a moving train. So the more things you do, the more tasks that you put into your calendar, the more things that you work on, the less likely you're going to get stuck in that negative mindset that's going to hold you back. Overall, I hope that you have loved this video. If you found it helpful, please comment. Let me know. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. Hit that notifications bell and share this with anyone that you think might like it. I am so grateful that you are here. I know how busy and distracted this world is and I know how valuable your time is. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here.